I've just found the world's best DIY CNC enclosure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Design Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. I've got a special surprise for you today. I'm here at David's house, uh, David Gray, and uh, he's allowing access to, for us and you guys to check out his do-it-yourself CNC enclosure. And let me tell you, it is world-class. I might bring David on camera now. So David, welcome to the Design Creativity and Technology right. channel. Thank you for having me around in your house. I really appreciate it. That's a pleasure, and I'm yeah. glad you could uh, come along today and, and have a look at this because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who will, will be interested. It's a lot of work, as I think the people who are viewing your channel will realise, so I'm happy to it's, go it's, through it all. It's definitely a labour of love. It is, a lot of labour. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm a retired mechanical engineer, um, Aaron, and uh, spent uh, not so much time in the workshop, although a lot of time in the workshop, but mainly in the mining industry um, as a professional engineer. But, but uh, the workshop has always been close at heart. I've got an extensive wood shop and, uh, and a reasonable metal shop, this baby being probably the central figure. When I bought this machine, it, it came without an enclosure. Well, you can see, if you can see over the top of the machine here that we've got a wall right behind me here, and in the wall we've got a door. I've got a very tight end of the here to accommodate the machine. So I didn't want the swarf coming to the front. And so the idea came to me to put gutters on the sides of the, of the machine base and, and allow the coolant to run into those gutters and then direct it to the back and to the back to the behind the machine and then into the the coolant tank so so having conceived that when I started to design it all the problems evaporated fairly easily so it, it turned out to be a fairly sound approach because there was no insurmountable problems and I'm quite quite pleased with the way it's way it's come together. So it drains into the gutters, but over the gutters, and we'll look at this later. I've got screens, which which I, I can withdraw from when I open the door. I can withdraw the screens and and then scrape the swarf off into a you know a bucket. So that's the plan anyway. Uh, hopefully that's the way it'll work out. Uh, Brampton Sheet Metal and uh, Phil Pears was the guy that helped me a lot. They took the step files and did their own development and produced their own DXF files. That, that way the, the, you know, the K factor and the bend allowance and all those parameters, they took responsibility for that, which was quite a good, good it was a fairly unique approach because most sheet metal contractors want a DXF file. I was happy to give him a DXF file but I asked them about the K factors and, and, and I was getting, well, you'd be better off just give us the step files and let us, let us, let us do, the, do the development and, and, and you know, all the information's in the step file and that's, that's better for me too. Yeah. One of the benefits which immediately became apparent when, when I was in the more detailed design was that the tramp oil going to all report onto the under the top of the machine base where SIL traditionally collect the coolant, I'm only now collecting the tramp oil. So all my tramp oil is basically now coming back completely separate from the coolant and I collect it down here. In fact, you might be able to see there's a little bit of oil in the drawer right now. And that, so that's, that drawer is picking up all the tramp oil I'm not expecting to see any really significant amount of oil uh, going into the coolant. And, and um, uh, that, that'll be a great benefit, I think. It'll save me a lot of fiddling around at the other side. So I've also incorporated a fairly wide access area 
and use this is a safety glass it's a six millimeter safety glass it's the shatterproof variety that doesn't go into go into little beads it's just it just cracks I think it's the laminated laminated safety glass so we've got that sitting on on guide tracks at the bottom and the top and they 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 work quite nicely I think one of the tricky points in this is which you probably can't may not be able to see with uh, at the moment but I'm sure Aaron will show you later but I'll I'll just point it out over the back here the connections and services coming up for the z-axis is of course you've got compressed air lube uh, coolant and electrical for the for the for the spindle drive there's a lot of lot of lot, th lot of ha lot of things happening there and because I've got this very tight corner I mean normally you could just accommodate some penetrations in the back wall and and take the services out through the back wall and go into your into your into your control box and down to the lube pumps etc but in my case because the corner is so tight I'm, I've elected to make a little box which just sits on top of the rear panel there so I don't have a penetration the other key thing that's not apparent is that you you might look at this and say well how is it supported and how it is supported is that there's three frames there's a frame in the front here which attack the all three frames attached to the base of the machine there's a frame in the front which basically supports th this main panel and it also picks up and supports the bottom side panels and the and, and it supports the front panel down there as well uh, and then the back panel supports mainly the rear panels and and it builds up from there so the system is basically in three layers the bottom layer which incorporates the the, the two drain trays uh, and the side skirts and the front as well as this which sits on the this also runs on the on that front frame and the draining surfaces are again split into two one being permanently fixed in this panel welded in place and then the other one uh, other one is removable this panel wraps from here right around to the side almost to the side of the column but at the side of the column I've actually put in two separate infill panels so that, so that they're they're a separate they're just separate because of the the ease of doing it that way rather than trying to carry this all the way through uh, a sile uh, x7 uh, servo model 2015 but the package i took was was uh, just with the controller this panel i bought separately I think I had what they call the basic control panel so so this just got, went in a box and you turn the whole machine on and off at your power point this machine at the moment now I've, I've reconfigured it so it will because this panel comes with a stop start station modified my electrics to include the stop start with the latching and I've also added in I've got some some uh, I think they're IP65 uh, automotive uh, LED lights I'm using spotlights for my lighting which I operate off the panel and at the moment I've just got them sitting on some wooden blocks that I can slide along this is a top hat channel find the optimum position and when I do I'll just then they've got brackets included I'll just attach them onto the top hat and they'll be in place This is a Hames industrial paint finish. Um, I, I, I thought about the paint for quite a while. A lot of, there was a lot of suggestions to use powder coating. Um, but I, was, I really wanted a painting surface, that painting system that I could do repairs to as well. And because I, you know, these are expensive to do this, you can do your own design, but you still have to have somebody fold up your sheet metal. It becomes an expensive 
exercised as people would realize doing something like this so because i've got you know experience in sparring and hvlp i thought well you know it'd be good to do it myself because then i've got control of the process and i can repair the paintwork if it if, if it needs repairing you know i can i can do that so this paint system uh, so i cyanate free painting system which again because i wear glasses uh, I wanted to go ISO free, otherwise, you know, you've you got an expensive full face mask and you ne I'd need the glasses insert, which adds in another, another major layer of cost. So there was a lot of options when I looked around on, on painting systems, but I found that, that, found that the Hames guys were the, were the most helpful and, and interested in what I was doing. One of the major things was I was trying to keep my costs down and if I got it powder coated or I got a professional to paint, paint it I then got extra, I've got to pay freight to get the panels here you know in an unscratched state so you just can't sort of load them in the back of your trailer or well, I don't have a trailer so having control of the process was part of my desire so that's why I did it myself in the vicinity of four grand $4,000, yeah. Australian dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't expect to get much change on that because you, 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 it probably cost me a little bit more. And it certainly cost you a lot in time. I mean, I've had to, to source all my componentry because in addition to that, you've also, you, you're also taking your MPG out through, out through the enclosure. And to do that, you've got to have a 16 pin plug. And so you've got to source that plug, you know, and, and it's so difficult to find all this. But it's, so I've spent a lot of time on the internet sourcing so, sourcing items so as well. Yeah, yeah. roughly four thousand Australian dollars, which I think is about twenty seven hundred US. I think about for I think five thousand Australians about three thousand yeah. US from memory. Yeah, the well, last I, time I did a I, conversion. My, 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 well, I, I suppose it probably on reflection four grand probably covers my panelling but I suppose by the time you add in, a, add in the paint and the other ancillary items there's probably another grand there you just can't do it no. you just can't do it no. for, for and this I've optimized this as much as possible to reduce the panels and simplify the design as much as I possibly could you know not having folds where I don't need them. I've only put in. I've only put the folds in where I consider they're necessary. It's, it's, I don't think there's a lot of. I'm happy with the finish, but it's not an embellished design. Yeah. Yeah. So look, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, thanks to David. Thanks for having having me over. It's, thanks for uh, coming. It's right? a big ask for someone to invite you into their home to do this sort of filming. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. Hopefully, David might jump on the uh, YouTube and comment as well if I can't answer stuff. Thanks for joining in and we'll see you back on the next video. Bye-bye.